Thank you for this great honor. It is a privilege to be in China and in Shanghai. I'm oh, sorry, in Chi Jia Zhong. We were in Shanghai in 2013, so um, with my friend Professor Fung. And today I will highlight some of our research done in cooperation with uh, Professor Fung and in Uppsala University. Thank you. Very happy to be this is always an honor for us to be in China and this is our perhaps 10th visit to this great country. We salute Chinese people and their love towards us. This reminds you of our previous visit to this great institution and we still admire our previous days. I heard from my previous speaker excellent Chinese medicine. We would like to try in some of our model. Maybe they could be better than what we are doing today. Okay. I said that I want to use some of the Chinese medicine that was shown by previous speaker in our model that could be better than what we are doing today. Translation. Well, this is a customary slide I should show to everywhere because we work with different governments and military. So it tells that views expressed are only mine. They do not belong to US Air Force, US military, Swedish government or any other organization where we work in cooperation. This slide will tell you that I see my results in my way, but since you are here, you might see in other way. And we need conference because we must correct our goal. I have my privilege to announce that some of the work that we are doing with Professor Fung on neuropathic pain and nanoparticles in the laboratory work has won this year top global innovation award in United States National Innovation Summit and Showcase last week in National Harbor, Washington, D.C. And this says the title, Use of Cerebralizing for the Treatment of Neuropathic Pain. So the innovation was Cerebralizing in Neuropathic Pain. And we still believe that whatever we know, we still very little know, and we need hard work to go further. Nowadays, our world is not peaceful. So everywhere we can see war, violence, and these are affecting our human health. 
，在世界各地都还存在着暴力和战争，呃，这些都危害着人们的生命。Brain and spinal cord injuries are the result of largely war, conflicts, motor vehicle accident, and related matters. I said that spinal cord injury or brain, they are very common in military. This is a day chart, and I think my translation, translator, she is very good, but she is afraid. But I can only tell you that most of the injury results in war are gunshot, motor vehicle collision. All these result in spinal cord injury or brain trauma. This is another way to tell you that spinal injuries are very complicated situations, and as a neurologist, you know how difficult it is to treat. This is another way to tell you that spinal injuries are very complicated situations, and as a neurologist, you know how difficult it is to treat. I just want to tell you that this is very common in the U.S. Department of Defense Directory that how a soldier is injured in battlefield and it is also very difficult to treat on the spot. Having in battlefield, there are special maneuvers that can produce brain, spinal cord injury, and injury to various body and organs. No conclusion. Okay. Look at this scene in in a desert. U.S. military and many other militaries are present in desert, and this is silica dust. So these soldiers are breathing silica, and if they get injured, their pathophysiology will be entirely different. If these soldiers are breathing silica dust, means sand. If they get injured, their pathology will be different. This is also very common in the battlefield, missile explosion, gunpowder explosion. She is unable to translate simple English words, but you will understand that here there are many carbon nanoparticles are in the air, and our soldiers are breathing almost every day. So in certain situations, the medicine that we treat our people in homeland, where the, these situations are not there, will not be working in the battlefield. So therefore, we try to understand or develop new kinds of therapy for these soldiers who are exposed to various kinds of problems like heat, nanoparticles, dust, and carbon nanoparticles. This is one of the volumes where we have described recent aspects of neuroprotection. 
呃，与这个神经保护的一点点这样。We also work in collaboration with Nobel laureate in physiology, his doctor Andrew Shelley, lives in Miami, United States of America. So here I will tell you some stories about drug delivery to new ways. We use Nanowires, this is an example here. And we take the help of Dr. Wang and Dr. Ryan Tian. They work in University of Arkansas Fayetteville. They are the expert of preparing titanium nanowires. Although the father of nanowires is Dr. Kudong Yang, he works in Berkeley, he is engineer by profession, he has no knowledge of medical science. But he is the father of nanowire materials. Nowadays the new trend is that we use stem cells that can also be nanowired and when delivered in the patients, they can survive for longer time than the stem cells given without nanowires. I show you this example when these stem cells were delivered using nanowires, they are more longer lively. <coughs> this is another example telling my mouse embryonic stem cell on silica nanowire they live longer. These two examples are showing that stem cells are grown on nanowires and you can see they are growing very for a long time and very lively. This is taken sometimes after you can see how stem cells are growing over nanowires and, and the uh, preparation is very clean. And this is on titanium nanowires. This is a nanowire. This is titanium. This is an example shown that nanowires are also used to kill cancer cells, particularly. This is an example in cell culture, where titanium-based nanowires of certain size can particularly hit cancer cells and kill them. So this is again telling you that we were invited because of this nanowire technology from this National Innovation Summit in Washington, D.C., May 12 to 16. Over 1,500 innovations were presented, and our innovation together with Dr. Fung came in top 20%. Well, this is the email of the conveying award. Since these nanowire techniques are very expensive, we are working with Arkansas government. This is the governor of Arkansas, Mike D.B., who helped us in our work tremendously. And Dr. Ryan Tian and Dr. Wang are also in Arkansas. 
这这是也是在一次会议当中，因为炼炭金技术也是比较昂贵的啊。那么这个是一个自己的，前面那个王教授和黄教授也曾经也在这个同一个会议。When we used nanowire, we wanted to study completely neutrally. So this is the company analysis of the drug effects. What we can see, there are four compartments. One, two, three, four. So when we analyze the untreated or all other drugs, this compartment is very bad after spinal cord injury. This part is the best. This compartment is the best. This part 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 is the best. You can see some of the drugs are lying in both compartments, but the nanowire delivery can bring. This is spinal cord injury into this category means almost normal. Mm -hmm. So this analysis tells that nanowire drugs are working. Then we went in some of our models on transmission electron microscopy. This is my wife Aruna working on gem. Uh, 2100 transmission electron microscope. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, in electron microscopy, you see myelin, the atoms are like this, they are very compact. This is the treatment, after treatment, but untreated, they look like this. Then we also have support from Swedish government. This is our prime minister, former prime minister, Goran Persson, who is helping us. And we have other great Chinese colleague, Dr. Wang, Dr. Wei Ning. And this is American uh, doctor Sandberg. We have a cooperation on cell transplantation. They are in Beijing. Okay, so I present briefly some examples of brain injury, and one example is hyperthermia or heat stress. Heat stress induced brain injury. Where there is cell damage. 
，这是一个帕金森的一个一个图，然后可以看到有这很多的范数表达，即使是这个 not out 的模型的话，也可以看到这个范数的表达。This is a recent paper in Nature Nanotechnology in 2012, telling that ubiquitin, this, this protein, can be influenced by gold nanoparticles. When gold particles were in contact with ubiquitin, you can see that they are penetrating and damaging the membrane. 可以看到，这就是这个范素与纳米颗粒结合的视图。So we studied ubiquitin expression after giving whole body hyperthermia. That is quite common in summer heat. 在这个夏天的时候，这是非常常见的。然后我们。This is the book we summarized nano neuroscience and nano neuropharmacology in 2009. Some of the aspects in brain injury. So the our idea is very simple. Our soldiers are exposed in Middle East of sand particles. There is high summer heat. What can happen to their brain if they are exposed for a long time? 所以这个是啊，我们的想法是非常的简单，就是在呃，我们的战士是经常暴露在这种强的阳光下面的，啊，嗯。So the silica silica dust was administered in this dose for seven days, and on eighth day they were subjected to short heat stress. 两天的流程是。每天呃七天，每天然后给这个阿尔法维的纳米离子，然后在第八天是给一个热晕剂，在三十八度的热晕剂。We use this chamber to induce heat stress. 我们使用这个东西来制造一个热晕剂。As you can see, that this is the condition of American military standing in the Middle East. These are silica dust. They are exposed almost every day. In some other countries, well, this is from Africa. Uh, these soldiers are always attentive to their borders, and they are lying in very close. So this is like just immobilization stress. 这张是一个非洲的当时战争的一张图，然后他每天趴在这里，就这是一种叫不动云机。So here we have a combination of stress, hyperthermia, and silica dust exposure. 
you can see that heat stress alone increases ubiquity. Silica dust together makes more. Cerebralizing alone could not reduce it, but nanowire cerebralizing did that. This picture is very similar, but it is telling neuronal injuries. Also, neuronal injuries are increased in silica exposed tracks. And in this case, normal cerebralizing, how good it could be, did not work well, but nanowire cerebralizing reduced it. You can see this is very tight correlation between ubiquitin expression and neuronal injuries. Then we studied another way of light microscopy. This is called Jai's microscopy. Here you can see this is control ubiquity in expression. This is cerebralizing alone. And after four hour heat stress and four hour heat stress plus silica, you can see much more expression of ubiquity when hyperthermia and silica is combined. Nanowire cerebralizing works best as compared to cerebralizing alone. This is an example of neuronal injury. You can see that this is controlled, heat stress and heat stress plus silica. Maximum injury and nanowire cerebralizing reduce these changes better than cerebralizing alone. So here we believe that nanowire cerebralizing is very important for the treatment of hyperthermia and therefore our drug development should be modified accordingly. Is that okay? Go? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Then I take you the same situation in another condition and this we are doing together with Dr. Dafi Murasami in Romania. We started working on ultra-structural pathology with Dr. Sarvas Navarao in Berlin, Germany. As I told you that cerebralizing is a mixture of BDNF, brain derived neurotrophic factor, glia derived neurotrophic factor, cilia neurotrophic factor, and nerve growth factor. Uh, 